What's up airplane collectors, welcome to a special model airplane review, it's your host Ray. In today's video, I'll be reviewing my first 1-200 scale model from NG Model. In this video, I'll be reviewing the 1-200 scale Boeing 737-600 in a blank livery. There is no airline on this one. In this video, I'll talk about the box, then the model itself, and at the end of the video, I'll give my personal opinion about what I think of the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. There's a lot to cover in this video, so that being said, let's get this party started. Starting off with the box. The box is a rigid cardboard box. It is a slightly different material from other competitors, and it definitely has a different finish to it, but it still does the job of a box. And the box art looks pretty interesting as well. It's a bunch of 737-600s on there. So here's the front, bottom, and I just realized I didn't cover dimensions. I'll go over that in a second. Right side, top, left side, and the back side. So this box is decently sized. It's 22 centimeters lengthwise and heightwise and eight centimeters wide. Decent for this, this kind of airplane and also relatively similar in size to other competitors' boxes of similar airplanes. Included is the model fully assembled, painted, and ready to go. Two options for landing gear configurations, one in the extended position, one in the retracted position. For the majority of this video, I will have the landing gear in the extended position, but I will demonstrate what it looks like in the retracted position later. There's also a thumbtack to help you remove either the extended configuration or retracted configuration, and a green collector rewards program card is also included. Before I begin my review, I'd like to give you a quick 360 of the model so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. This is quite interesting to do without any sort of livery because it does remove the factor of paint defects. Well, it removes the uh, chance for me finding one greatly since that's where usually paint defects happen is in the livery of the aircraft. But that also is going to allow me to pay a bit more attention to the mold, which is why I'm doing this review on this blank model. This model is accurate in size to 1 to 200 scale at 15 centimeters for the fuselage length, 16 and a half centimeters for the wingspan, and six and a half centimeters tall. Relatively large for a model aircraft, depending on what you collect, but it's accurately sized. It's also quite heavy because it is made, I believe, primarily out of die-cast metal. It might be entirely die-cast metal. I haven't done really a materials analysis on this. Starting off the review with the fuselage, we'll start at the front of the aircraft. Here we've got the nose. The nose looks fantastic. Nose shape seems to be pretty accurate. Printing seems to be okay. Everything seems to be A-OK -okay up here, no complaints. Shapes look good, uh, very good start so far. Decent amount of printed detail, we've got the passenger windows as well as a few placards and signs and of course the doors. Uh, as you move down the fuselage, you'll notice that there is a crease here. This is accurate, it looks very good. Uh, I'd like to try and bring your attention to the wing seam. I'll go over this later, but the wing seam looks fabulous. As we continue down the fuselage, that crease still continues back here. That is accurate, I believe. And so far, very solid. Here's the vertical stabilizer. Uh, there isn't really much printed detail. There's actually no printed detail on this. And the molded detail for the rudder is a bit hard to see. It appears as though the paint did fill in the gap for the rudder there. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a ton of geese flying over. It's later in the year here in North America, so we get a bunch of geese flying. But uh, yeah, that's what that noise was, if you guys heard that. Anywho. Uh, yeah, molded detail for the rudder seems to have been filled in quite a lot. It's still visible, but not as much. But that detail still is accurate, so I won't complain too much. Alright, so the right side seems to be a tad bit better. Now, something that I do notice that is possibly missing from the rudder here is I would often see this section of the rudder that would protrude, uh, protrude from... right around the middle of the rudder. This It's like a hinge that the rudder rotates on. I'm not sure if this is present on all 737 variants, but I remember seeing something like that. So just take that into consideration. That's not a criticism. It's just something that I noticed. The right side of the aircraft is virtually the same as the left side. So I'm going to just uh, show that right now. Everything that can be said about the left side can also be said about the right side. And so far, we're off to a really solid start in the fuselage. Now, where things get hairy with this model are on the wings. Now, before I talk about the defects on this model, which I actually cleared off, but I do have photographs of, so I will show those momentarily. Earlier, I was talking about the wing seam. The wing seam here is pretty darn good. 
Uh, I'm very impressed because the only other 1 to 200 scale models I've had so far are Gemini models. That's the vast majority of them at least. And one JC model. And the wing seams are typically a bit more defined than this, but NG did a pretty solid job with the wing seams. Uh, I'm very impressed. And this is definitely promising for uh, the future of 1 to 200 scale NG models. Uh, you can also see the one on the right wing here. Very impressive. So very good job to uh, NG on the wing seam. Now, uh, back to the rest of the wing. So there is a decent amount of molded detail. Of course, we've got the flaps and the air brakes. Uh, some of it's a little bit filled in, but it's still visible, so all of it looks pretty good. Uh, solid printed detail, uh, and that's where the issue starts. So here you can see that there's a slight stain here on the left wing. When I opened the box, this is what it looked like. Uh, there was a lot of staining. The left wing had it the worst, but ironically, it was the easiest to clean. I just used some uh, water-based paint thinner that cleaned off the staining. But it was still pretty irritating to see that. And I noticed that the top of the wing here was in direct contact with the plastic that protects the model. So I'm not sure if that's related, but just keep in mind that, that might be an issue with this one. So that's something I was pretty disappointed about. And uh, I didn't even go over the metallic paint. Here's the metallic painted sections on the leading edge. Those look pretty cool. Uh, bottom of the wing, uh, not really any detail down here. It's pretty bland. There's not really much to put down there either, so I uh, won't complain. Now, the right wing. The right wing is where I had the most of my troubles, and this is not politically re related, so don't take this out of context. <laughs> All right, uh, so here you can see there's also some traces of stains, and you might see that there's a bit of inconsistency. If you have a good eye, you can see there's an inconsistency with the thickness of the printed uh, line here. That's because that right there is a decal. This line was completely broken, if you will, and stained, and this is what it looked like before the operation I pulled with it, and this is what it looks like after. So, while it's not perfect, I think I did a decent job at trying to fix it. So, yeah, printed detail on the wings was definitely damaged. I haven't seen this on other models, but this was an unpleasant surprise. Uh, yeah, so, all I have to say is be wary, uh, just be careful about, uh, just know that, uh, wing paint defects are an issue with this model. Uh, moving to the rear of the aircraft, here's the, hor the horizontal stabilizers. These look pretty good, uh, no complaints. There is some uh, metallic paint on the front, which looks pretty solid. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good back here. APU looks, wow, very nicely detailed. There's holes for the exhausts and the different parts and all that stuff. Very good so far. Down here, we've got the APU access doors. These look pretty good. Yeah, no complaints. Right from here, we'll move on to the engines. The engines on this model, just look at that. They're beautiful. Very nicely detailed. I don't see anything necessarily wrong with them. Uh, very nice. And the thing that gets me, those fan blades. Look at those fans. Incredibly detailed. Now, their Achilles heel is that they do not spin. NG does not like spinning fans. So they don't spin. There's no spinner spirals, but they are incredibly detailed. Very good. Uh, here's the one on the right side looks very nice. They did a very good job on the engines on this model. In terms of aerial details, we've got some antennas on this model. Uh, these little sections here, th uh, these little domes, those are printed. Ironically enough, I've seen these uh, three-dimensional on 1 to 400 scale models from Aviation 400, so it is slightly surprising that NG didn't try to do these uh, 3D either, either, but I don't expect them to because these are incredibly small, but this is something I noticed. But yeah, the antennas here, they're pretty small, but they look pretty good. Uh, we also have the three antennas at the bottom of the aircraft. These look pretty solid as well. So aerial details on this model are quite nice. Moving to the bottom of the aircraft, you can see lots and lots of detail down here. Uh, very nicely done overall. Printed detail on this model is really solid, except for on the wings. So moving on to the landing gear. This is what the landing gear looks like in the extended position. The wheels are made out of rubber and they roll very nicely, all three of them. The nose wheel does not pivot. I don't think it's supposed to, but if it is, it does not pivot on my model, which I don't mind personally. I don't really see a point to putting a pivot on the wheel, but it does not pivot, it, but it does roll. The wheel does roll. Now, the landing gear on this model are attached via a system of magnets, and I can just remove them very easily as such. So this is what uh, removing them is like. Now, as for the individual gear pieces themselves, here's the nose gear. Very incredibly detailed. Wow. That, oh, shoot. That looks really good. Uh, no complaints. And more importantly, when compared to the competition, the nose gear fits flawlessly into the nose uh, the nose gear bay, if you will. Uh, when I say the competition, 
I'm referring to Gemini. Theirs on their mold isn't exactly the best. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been sick for the past three weeks, so my voice is a little shot. So, yeah, this is definitely a promising thing to see. Now, I'm going to demonstrate what the landing gear look like in the retracted position, assuming that I put them incorrectly. So, uh, there is no guidance or system to use to guide yourself into putting the gear in it. Oh my god, that ma magnetic attachment is pretty strong. Alright, so now that I got those in, here's what they look like in the retracted position. They fit very nicely. I'll say that. Now, the main gear ones, they do require a bit of a push to get in there, even though they're magnetically attached, the fit isn't exactly perfect, but once you push them, they'll be just fine. So, there's that. They, they fit very well, the wheel details are outlined very nicely, and the nose gear one is very smooth. Look at the fit with the fuselage, very nice. So these retracted covers are pretty good. Now, I'm not sure why you'd use this, because this model, despite having a display stand hole, it does not include a display stand. Now, NG has not released any official display stands yet, but I imagine they're going to sell one eventually. So if you do want to display this, I'd assume it works with other competitors and you might have to modify it a little bit to uh, get the fit to be right. Uh, modify the display stand, not the airplane. Uh, it's better if you do that, unless you have the, the gel cushions that Gemini uses, then that might work. But still, uh, yeah, this model does not include a display stand with it, but it does have a display stand hole. And yeah, I don't exactly recommend using this configuration if you're going to display it anywhere because if you display it on the floor like this, you risk damaging those small antennas down there. So uh, just hold off on using these unless you have a display stand that works. All right, so something I'd like to bring to your attention is that it's pretty difficult to remove the retracted gear covers. So make sure you have precision tweezers and a bit of patience so you don't end up damaging the model or the landing gear pieces when removing them. And if you don't have to put in the retracted covers, don't. Uh, the main gear ones are the ones I had trouble with. The nose gear one is easy to insert and remove. The main gear ones are a bit, e a bit more difficult to insert and remove. And here's the front of the aircraft. Engine clearance looks good. Vertical stabilizer alignment looks a little bit lopsided to the left side of the aircraft. Definitely a bit lopsided. I'll make sure that's not the surface itself, though. Yeah, it's a little bit lopsided to the left side of the aircraft. Uh, cockpit window printing looks good it might be slightly twisted i'm not 100 sure but it looks good uh gear symmetry looks good uh gear balance yeah gear symmetry and balance looks pretty good overall solid performance from the front here just yeah that cockpit window printing and the vertical stabilizer are a little bit iffy there and with that is the end of my review now time for my personal opinion and recommendation so this being my first one to 200 scale ng model it was not exactly the greatest first impression, especially with those wing defects. Actually, only because of those wing defects. Now, this is not going to be a permanent addition to my fleet. I'm actually going to uh, sell this one pretty soon. But we're not off to the greatest start. However, the mold quality on this model is fantastic. The nose shape, beautiful. The way the gears fit, amazing. The retracted covers are a bit iffy, but it's not impossible to work with. Definitely not as hard as other models. But... Overall, this is a solid start for NG, and I have, ev I have every belief that NG will do amazing things in 1 to 200 scale as they have with 1 to 400 scale. So overall, the mold is great, just the quality control could use a bit more improvement. I was not very happy with those wing marking issues. So do I recommend this model to other collectors? If you want a blank 737-600, it's a bit bland, it's a bit plain, you could say. I'll stop. Um... Yes, I definitely do recommend it. Just be aware that there may be issues with the printing on the wings due to the way that the model is uh, put in the box. So there's always that risk. Uh, but yeah, if you are thinking about getting an NG model uh, 737-600, even if it's not this blank one, I say go for it because the mold is great. Now, I don't have any intentions of buying one with an airline livery on it, but based on the photos I've seen, they're tremendously good and just beautiful quality and I definitely recommend getting this model, even if it's an airline livery. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. It is good to be back and talking to you guys. Uh, I really missed home. These past few weeks at school have been uh, very taxing on me, but I'm back at home, and I'm back doing reviews, so uh, very happy right now. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. Catch you guys next time. See you later.